Okay kiddos, we're back and today we're going to talk about something called density. Density is a physical property um, of a substance. Do you guys remember if it's intensive or extensive? Ooh, nice little review question there. Intensive, extensive. Intensive does not depend upon how much of the material you have. Extensive does. So let's say, oh, the density of water is one gram per milliliter. Would that be for a little thimble full of water? Or is that for a whole big swimming pool of water? It doesn't make a difference how much we have. The density is one gram per mil. So it is an intensive physical property. Now, to find density, it's pretty easy. We need to know two things, the object's mass and the object's volume. If we know those two things, we divide the mass by the volume and we have the density. It can also be written D equals M over V. Perhaps you've seen that equation in your junior high science class. In chemistry, we like to measure mass in the unit gram and we like to measure the unit volume in milliliters. But remember, isn't a gram per milliliter the same as a gram per cubic centimeter? They're the same thing, milliliters and cubic centimeters. Remember? All right. So to measure density, we have to be able to measure mass and volume. Mass can be measured on a balance. Pretty easy to do. Take the object, put it on the balance, and we can read the digital display. It will tell us the object's mass. However, the volume of a solid, we can figure out a few different ways. For instance, the volume of a cube if you remember, we found the volume of a cube in an earlier video is simply the length of each, well, one edge cubed. The volume of a rectangular solid is the length multiplied by the height and the width. And the volume of a liquid can be found in a clear container graduated to indicate units of volume. These are called graduated cylinders, and in our lab coming up, we will find the volume using all three of these methods. Okay? Now, when you have an equation, there are two possible ways to solve uh, a given math problem. Um, we could use dimensional analysis, which I like to use, or we could just plug and chug by using the equation up above. But I like to use dimensional analysis. So, like I say here, either way is correct. However, we like to use dimensional analysis in these examples to make sure you fully understand the concept of dimensional analysis. So let's start by finding the density of a block of lead. So I'm going to give you, um, looks like the length, the width, and the height of this block, and its mass, but the mass I'm giving in kilograms. Now I want the density in grams per cubic centimeter. So let's see, how are we going to do that? We need to know grams, and I know kilograms, so let's start with 4.103 kilograms. Okay, and we don't like that unit, remember, folks. We want to use grams in my numerator, so I'm going to put kilograms in the bottom and grams on top. So let's see, kilo means a thousand, doesn't it? A thousand grams, so one kilogram has a thousand grams in it. So if I were to stop my calculation right here, I would know the mass of my lead block in grams. Okay, so my numerator is okay. Now my denominator, I want to be in cubic centimeters. So if I multiplied centimeter by centimeter by centimeter, wouldn't I have cubic centimeters? I would. So let's divide by 4.37 and 6.02 and 13.68. That's the same as dividing by 4.37 times 6.02 times 13.68, all in my denominator. So 4.37 centimeters and 6.02 centimeters and 13.68 centimeters. So I'm dividing by centimeters, centimeter and centimeter. So I'm dividing by centimeters cubed. So I'll have grams on top, boom, and cubic centimeters on the bottom. So let's pull out our calculator and see how we enter this, folks. I think you guys can do this pretty well with me. So let's see, we have 4.103, and we're going to multiply that by 1,000, kiddos, so times 1,000. And then we're going to divide. Each of these numbers are on the bottom, folks, so we're going to divide by each of those numbers. So I'm going to divide by 4.37, divide by 
6.02 and then I'll divide by 13.68 and I get 11.40085682 looks like I am allowed how many sig figs let's take a look there are four sig figs here that's a definition so there's infinite sig figs three three and four so I can have three sig figs in my answer so rounding this off to three significant figures I'm going to get 11.4 grams per cubic centimeter okay now once again I, I'll bet some kids question my math here they wanted me to divide by this then multiply by this and multiply by this don't do that now here's another way I could have set it up I could have taken my 4.103 kiddos and multiply by a thousand starting off the same way okay whoops right there now I'm gonna divide by I'm gonna use my parentheses key here kiddos okay the product of these three so I'm gonna use my parentheses key to tell my calculator that I want to divide by the product of those numbers so let's see uh, 4.37 times 6.02 times 13.68 close off my parentheses and now I can press enter and you see I get the same answer okay alrighty well now that we know the density of that block of lead can't I use density as a conversion factor think about it for every piece of lead that's a cubic centimeter in volume won't it have a mass of 11.4 grams that's a conversion factor, 11.4 grams of lead per cubic centimeter. So I can use this density as a conversion factor. Watch, let me do the next problem. What would be the volume in cubic centimeters of a block of lead that has a mass of 25.3 grams? Well, let's start with what I know, 25.3 grams, right? And I want to get out of grams, so let's put that on the bottom, kiddos and I want to get into cubic centimeters. Let's put that on top. Now that looks weird. Do I know a conversion factor to go from grams to cubic centimeters? You bet I do. My density for lead is 11.4 grams in a cubic centimeter. 11.4 grams in a cubic centimeter. So grams divide out and I have the volume of my cube of lead in cubic centimeters. So let's see what that is. 25.3 divided by 11.4. Alright, 25.3 divided by, it's on the bottom, 11.4. So let's see what that says. 2.219, we're allowed three significant figures, so how about 2.22 cubic centimeters. So that cube would have a volume of 2.22 cubic centimeters. Okay, so we use density as a conversion factor. Here, let's try another one. Um, let's say I have an irregular shaped piece of lead. The volume of that irregular shape is 45.2 milliliters. Now, are you thinking a little bit ahead of me? Isn't a milliliter the same as a cubic centimeter? That's right. So I'm going to start with 45.2 cubic centimeters again. And you finish this one off, okay? Pause the video. Finish it off. Round your answer off to the correct number of sig figs. Then turn the video back on and see how you did. All right. We're back. So now I have cubic centimeters over here. We want to hop out of cubic centimeters. And I want to find the mass in grams. So do I know a conversion factor here? You bet I do. Don't I know that there are 11.4 grams in a cubic centimeter? 11.4 grams in a cubic centimeter. So cubic centimeters divide out and I'll have my answer in grams. So let's see what we get here. 45.2 times 11.4. See, I'm multiplying by 11.4 because it's on the top this time. So let's see what we get. 515.28 rounded off to three significant figures. Did you get 515 grams? Yeah, 500. 
and 15 grams is what I got. Okay, let's try this one. How much would that piece of lead weigh in pounds? So we know it's mass in grams, 515 grams, and so we have to go from grams to pounds. Hmm, do we know a conversion factor that will help us go from grams to pounds? Yeah, go ahead and pull, flip your notebook back a few pages. Didn't I tell you earlier that one pound is 454 grams to three significant figures? So one pound is 454 grams. That's on the bottom, so we're going to divide by it. So let's see what that piece of lead would weigh in pounds. So we have 515 divided by 454 to three significant figures. How does 1.13 pounds? 1.13 pounds. Okay. So that's how we handle density. So I taught you how to calculate density, and then I taught you how to use density as a conversion factor in a couple of problems, and then we went ahead and converted from grams to pounds, just as a little bit of review. Okay, let's go to the next page. We have a couple more practice problems. Let's do this one. We have a piece of aluminum. Now that piece of aluminum is placed in a 25 mil graduated cylinder and it contains 10.5 milliliters of water. And when I put the aluminum in there, kerplunk, the water level rises to 13.5 milliliters. What is the mass of the aluminum? Okay, well let's see. I'm giving you the density. So the density of aluminum is known. We want to know how much it weighs in grams. What is its mass? So let me draw a picture of what we did here. If you can imagine, folks, a graduated cylinder, and we get to do this in the lab shortly, it contains 10.5 mils of water. So here's my water, and I read that as 10.5 milliliters. Okay? Then kerplunk, I go ahead and I put a chunk of aluminum in there. What's going to happen to the water level? That's right, it goes up to 13.5 milliliters. Well, wouldn't the difference here give me the volume of the aluminum chunk? Yeah, it looks like the difference is 3 milliliters. So that would be the volume of my piece of aluminum. So if I know the volume, can't I use the density as a conversion factor to find the grams? Yes, I can. 3.0 milliliters, that's my volume. I want to hop out of milliliters, so I put that on the bottom, kiddos, and get into grams. And I know my density is 2.7 grams per milliliter. 2.7 grams per milliliter. So milliliters divide out, and I will have the mass of that piece of aluminum in grams. Looks like I'm allowed two significant figures. So we have 3 times 2.7 uh, 8.1 is what my calculator says. 8.1 grams. That would be the mass of that chunk of aluminum that I put in my graduated cylinder. Okay? Alright. Let's see. Is the cube pictured to the left? Pure aluminum. So here's a cube. I want to know if this is aluminum or not. So the mass is 20 grams, and the volume is 5 cubic centimeters. Now, don't I know the density of aluminum from the previous problem is 2.7? So if the density of this is 2.7, it could be aluminum. So let's find the density of that cube. So we're going to take grams divided by cubic centimeters, mass divided by volume. So 20 grams divided by... 5 cubic centimeters. I don't need my calculator for this one. I'm that good. 20 divided by 5 is 4 grams per cubic centimeter. So, can that be aluminum? Let's see. The density of aluminum is 2.7. The density of this is 4. No, it cannot be aluminum. Okay, it's a metal that has, a, or an object that has a mass of 4 grams per cubic centimeter not 2.7. Okay? Alright, this last problem we'll save for another video. So, hope you enjoyed our discussion on density today. We'll be doing a lab on it soon.
Bye-bye.